Hello guys, welcome to the Parson series and this is a very very important topic, the ocular manifestations of systemic diseases and we have covered it previously in our uh, notes also but I think this is very very important to go through the Parsons because you know sometimes they are specifically choosing the image from the book and they are giving to you. So let's get started. The ocular manifestations, so if you talk about the eye in the systemic disease, let us see what they have to talk about it. The eye is intimately linked with the rest of the body in many ways so yes eye is actually involved and uh, that uh, that is the thing that I keep on saying that it is actually linked with all the systems of the body and uh, its blood supply the continuity of the nerve fibers even you know it is connected with the brain uh, with the meninges it is therefore expected that eye would reflect changes within the body especially the vascular changes so whenever we are having changes in the eye we cannot take it independently maybe there are changes which are going on in the whole of the body widespread and major disorders we are always talking about diabetes and hypertension and we have all covered them also extensively now apart from this diabetes and hypertension we have got other systemic disorders which are noteworthy so we will be talking about them immunopathological processes at the eye so you already have this knowledge in the microbiology that uh, we have got the different kinds of hypersensitivity reactions we have type 1 hypersensitivity reaction which is IgE mediated we can have the anaphylactic reactions uh, which are taking place due to the administration of penicillin we can also have them by the ingestion of certain foods we can have vertic area right this you already know then we have got the type 2 reactions type 2 reactions are actually complement mediated when you know antibodies and antigens are combining so immune complexes are forming um, this that is complement activated and when um, these immune complexes are actually circulating in the systemic uh, circulation in the blood that is your type 3 so that is present in the tissue fluid or it is circulation and finally we have got the type 4 hypersensitivity reaction which is cell mediated delayed type of hypersensitivity reaction and in the eye you know we have got different kinds of allergic conjunctivitis VKC is type 1 mediated IgE that is your immediate hypersensitivity reaction then we have got the type 4 hypersensitivity reaction that is delayed type of hypersensitivity reaction and uh, you know um, sometimes we also read this that uh, this uh, the VKC is mixed type 1 uh, some books say that it is type 1 plus type 2 some books say it is type 1 plus type 4 so then we also have a type 5 hypersensitivity reaction you know this is long acting thyroid stimulation that that is your non complement fixing immunoglobin antithyroid antibody so we have lot of uh, you know hypersensitivity reactions which are actually involved in the eye now one specific thing uh, because you know we keep on reading about ankylosing spondylitis in the uh, acute uh, eye also when we have got the acute painful eye so over 90 percent of the patients who are having ankylosing spondylitis they are showing HLA B27 and a normal person who is positive for this antigen is 100 times more risk of developing this disease than a person who is B27 negative so basically I, I think you know actually B27 positivity is also a risk factor for this patient for the development of ankylosing spondylitis okay now apart from uh, you know acute anterior uveitis this is HLA B27 associated we have optic neuritis you have to remember these associations optic neuritis is HLA DRW and DW5 is there then we have got the myasthenia gravis myasthenia gravis is HLA B8 and DRW3 and then we have got thyrotoxicosis which is your DW3 and B8 so uh, you know HLA associations are important and you can keep a note of them which are actually present in the eye okay now we come to the autoimmune disorders we know that mainly uveitis is having the autoimmune etiology or the allergic etiology so ocular involvement is actually found in a number of autoimmune disorders so prominent example is the hypertensive retinopathy which is seen in the systemic lupus erythematosus polyarthritis nodosa and takayasu arthritis so iska kya hai ki 
Every simple line is also important. You have to read every simple line. So, hypertensive retinopathy in the SLE, then polyarthritis nodosa, SLE is there, polyarthritis nodosa and takasyasu arthritis. In all these three things, it is important. Okay? Now, let us see the first image. You cannot skip these images. They are really, really important. First of all, you can see the retinal changes in the systemic lupus erythematosus. Um, you can see the macular star formation see this uh, this is your macular area right this is your macular area this is the macula why this is macula because you can see the optic disc here this area is the optic disc so if this area uh, I will make it a little broader so if this area is the optic disc so obviously this area will be macula and in the macula you can see the macular star formation which is found in the hypertension retinopathy this is a case of systemic lupus erythematosus then we have got the second one this is extensive neovascularization can you see a lot of neovascularization so whenever you see this you should always remember that this is a case of the Takayasu arthritis. Cataract and glaucoma, you know uh, that can result due to the prolonged use of corticosteroids whenever we read the toxic cataract. Whenever we are reading the toxic cataract, we are studying that uh, it can be A, it can be B, it can be C or it can be D. So C actually stands for corticosteroids and corticosteroids say we have the generalized tonic clonic seizures. So topical steroids can result in the glaucoma while the systemic steroids can result in the cataract. That is again an important thing we always keep on reading. And uh, you know bullseye maculopathy they are talking about that the chloroquine therapy can lead to the bullseye maculopathy right okay now ocular and systemic features of the immunological disorders they are talking about the sarcoidosis sarcoidosis may you have the candle wax dripping you have got those snowball opacities and they are uh, you know sinking at the bottom they are settling at the bottom and that is leading to the snow banking so you have to remember this now sometimes you also have the hematological diseases hematological diseases may just say ki, uh, we can have the blood dyscrasias malignancies they are having a number of manifestations but you know you have to keep a high degree of suspicion because you know uh, malignancies is such a severe disease that if you are not keeping these uh, high degree of suspicion in your mind mostly you are not able to give uh, you know uh, a scope for the uh, you know opinion uh, of the ophthalmologist you are not able to keep that space that that eye disease actually is coming to your mind. So ocular and systemic features of the hematological disorders, again uh, this is very very important. The fundus of a patient who is having the chronic myeloid leukemia that is CML. You will get number of hemorrhages in the fundus and you know CML is one disease which you cannot ignore. You are definitely going to get a question on this. So you should always remember the fundus image of the CML. While if I am talking about the infectious diseases, systemic infections may, it can come through the metastasis also, it can come by local spread also or immune mediated also. Like if I talk about the direct, what are the examples of direct? Direct may, it is dendritic keratitis which will be due to the herpes simplex or it can be necrotizing chorioretinitis. Necrotizing is found in chorioretinitis by the cytomegalovirus. Then if I talk about the indirect, indirect is by in the filentinular conjunctivitis, then subacute sclerosing panencephalitis. After the measles, papal edema, cryptococcal meningitis, again I will say that keep on remembering these things. You can also add these things in uh, the main topics where you have written the filicinular conjunctivitis, you can write there. Then uh, along with the measles, you can write subesclerosing panencephalitis. Along with the cryptococcal meningitis, you can write the papal edema there. Okay. Now, if I talk about HIV, now this is one thing again which you cannot ignore. So, if I talk about the uh, HIV, you know, infection, this is RNA virus, this you know, we have got two kind of HIV, HIV-1 is mainly responsible for the human infections, right. Now, what are the confirmed routes? So, that you already know, we have the sexual intercourse, infected blood, mother to child, hematogenous and this disease is actually which uh, lymphocytes? T helper lymphocytes right so T helper lymphocytes are actually helping us to combat 
the with the opportunistic infection so if i am getting low cd4 count more of the opportunistic infection just to say most common is your cmb retinitis the clinical spectrum of manifestation can range from acute infection also then to the asymptomatic period uh, window period before the zero conversion and we can get only the generalized lymphadenopathy or you can get full blown hiv so it depends upon the person to person diagnosis is based on your enzyme immuno assay elisa the who has laid the criteria for making a provisional diagnosis if the blood tests are not available then also we have this um, arrangement that we can make the diagnosis now the presence of any two major signs right and one minor sign is a indication now let us see what are the major signs major signs we more than uh, 10% loss of body weight we have fever we have diarrhea minor signs kya hai if i talk about the minor signs minor signs may you have got chronic cough we have itchy dermatitis recurrent herpes oropharyngeal candidiasis chronic progressive herpes infection and the generalized lymphadenopathy now this is the thing that you already know but a revision is must now if i talk about the ocular features right so ocular manifestations of hiv may the ophthalmic manifestation of hiv are itself a microangiopathy microangiopathy of which organ we have the conjunctiva retina then we have kaposi sarcoma of the eyelids that is also there along with the conjunctiva now if i talk about the microangiopathy of the conjunctiva it's a microvasculopathy this is seen in a high number of patients 75% of the patients are showing the microangiopathy in the conjunctiva where you can have the telangiectasia segmental dilatation then we have the comma shaped fragments and sludging in the smaller blood vessels now another important thing is that when i am talking about the hiv retinopathy that it's non infectious kind it's another important thing it is non infectious it's a microvasculopathy this thing is important and microvascular affection is found in how much 50 to 70% of the patients we have number of hemorrhages it can be superficial or the deep hemorrhages we have microaneurysms and we have the cotton wool spots amongst which the most important is your cotton wool spots so one of the important thing is cotton wool spots and they are going to regress over 6 to 8 weeks so i think the most important thing for once i have put a question mark here other things that you can have is your herpes zoster ophthalmicus molluscum contagiosum pyogenic infections infective keratitis uveitis cmv retinitis is really really important cmv retinitis that you are getting on cd4 count when it is less than 50 then you have the progressive outer retinal necrosis herpes zoster retinopathy we can also have the pneumocystic carinae choroidopathy syphilis toxoplasmic retinochoroiditis mycobacterial infections fungal endophthalmitis so blah 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 there are so many things that can occur but the most common are two things that you see one is your conjunctiva and one is retina conjunctiva may uh, uh, you have the microvasculopathy microvasculopathy may you have telangiectasias you have dilatations you have fragments retinopathy you know is the cmv retinitis giving you cotton wool spot cd4 count less than 50 ठीक है नाउ व्हाट आर द ऑफथैल्मिक मैनिफेस्टेशंस इन द पोस्टीरियर सेगमेंट यू हैव पैपिलिडिमा ऑप्टिक एट्रोफी हेडेक्स इन द नर्व पाल्सीज एंड सीडी4 काउंट एज आई टोल्ड यू इज कोरिलेटिंग टू सम एक्सटेंट विद द क्लिनिकल मैनिफेस्टेशंस लाइक फॉर एग्जांपल इफ इट इज लेस देन 500 लेस देन 500 इज सीन विद द कापोसी सार्कोमा लिम्फोमा ट्यूबरक्यूलोसिस देन वी हैव लेस देन 250 इज एसोसिएटेड विद द न्यूमोसिस्टिक इंफेक्शन टॉक्सोप्लाज्मा इंफेक्शन एंड देन वी हैव लेस देन 100 this is associated with the microvasculopathy cmv retinitis varicella zoster retinitis cryptococcus and hiv retinopathy so you can get a association with the cd4 count also so sometimes they can also ask you that which disease is more common with which cd4 count a summary of the clinical features have been given in the table so you can mark this table then ocular and systemic features of the parasitic diseases so kaposi sarcoma you can see here i think this is again important because nowadays they are asking these kind of things sometimes they are asking you you know about this um, lid coloboma sometimes they are asking about the nevus sometimes they are asking about the kaposi sarcoma now if i talk about the endocrine disorders we have got lot of metabolic uh, diseases like we have diabetes and um, we have got important manifestations like if you remember 
remember we talk about the KF ring in the Wilson's disease that is there. Uh, then prominent corneal nerves. Prominent corneal nerves are seen in the medullary carcinoma of the thyroid. This is again important. Only the names you have to learn from here. Then we have the images here. So you can see the Wilson's disease. This is your sunflower cataract and second is your KF ring. I think we have seen the sunflower cataract so many times. This is the anterior subcapsular cataract having 9 to 10 petals and then we have a KF ring. KF ring is found in the Wilson's disease. Golden brown in color, reversible on treatment and seen in the dismissed membrane of the cornea. First seen in the superior and inferior quadrants and then this is found with the hepatolenticular degeneration. People having the hepatolenticular disease will show only 50% of the patients will show KF ring patients showing CNS manifestation about almost 100% people will show the KF ring right so this is your again lipemia retinalis in the juvenile diabetes I will again request you to go through these images again once before going to the final exam uh, muscular disorders may you have a lot of you know uh, extracular muscles which are slightly differing from the skeletal muscles everywhere in the body. So in these uh, the list of inherited disorders which can affect the eyes too long. So we will go with the most important one. The most diseases would come first to the pediatrician and usually you have the ophthalmic association. So see we have a lot of association with the pediatrics also, dermatology also, um, immunology also and arthropathy is also. I think eye is the most integrated subject. Right. So, ocular and systemic features of the inherited diseases may we have the Sturge Weber syndrome, choroidal hemangiomas, episcleral angiomas. Um, see this, you can see episcleral angiomas, lot of new vascularization over the sclera, choroidal hemangiomas where you have lot of blood vessels in the choroid that is seen. Look at this. This is a plexiform neurofibromatosis you can see on the right side of the face and you don't have to read the you know systemic features separately here because you already go through these systemic features while you are reading it from the medicine right. Then this is your Lish nodules. I think Lish nodules are again very important whenever you are reading about the neurofibromatosis. We have the uh, caffeol spots, we have axillary freckling, we have got optic nerve gliomas, we have Lish nodules which are your iris hematomas. So again all these four things are related. They can give any three and they can ask you the fourth one. All right, this is a very uh, good one, retinal angioma, retinal angioma which is found in the angiomatosis retini. So lot of images, lot of good work in the ocular manifestations of the systemic diseases. Let us see the summary. We have a large number of the systemic diseases which are leading to the multi-system morbidity and uh, diseases which are affecting the immune system are important like we have hypersensitivity reactions, we have autoimmune collagen disorders, immunodeficiency disorders, we have endocrine disorders we have myopathies, arthropathies, we have got the dystrophies and various inherited disorders which are giving you prominent as well as pathonomic ocular manifestations. Keep studying, keep shining and I think this chapter is going to give you definitely one question. Thank you and happy ophthalmology.